Ruprecht. Get your hairy butt in here. We've got big trouble. What is it, master? Is your colitis acting up again? Shall I go retrieve the enema bag? No, my poopy pants can wait. We've got far more serious issues. Did our Super Bowl tickets fall through? You know that all of us on the trading desk are big Giants fans. If we don't get our tickets, we'll have to watch the game on television with all the hype alloy. No. That's not it. Of course you'll get your Super Bowl tickets. Just like your inflated bonuses, your tickets will always be there. Then what is it? What is the emergency? It's silver. I fear we are once again moving to the edge of disaster. What? You must be joking. Last May, we crushed silver and raised margins five times. We crushed it again in September and December. How could we be in trouble? Didn't we scare off the sheep? Yes we did. We were able to scare away many of the weak hands and minds. But the time has come for you to learn what was really going on. You need to know so you can prepare accordingly. Prepare accordingly? You sound like Turd Ferguson. Have you been seeing him again? I thought he was dating Charlie's Theron. No. That sanctimonious little prick never calls anymore. Besides, I read in Us Weekly that he recently dumped that slut Charles and took up with Rachel McAdams. Oh, good for Turd. Rachel McAdams is a hottie. Haven't you seen the notebook? Enough. I don't want to talk about him anymore. Sorry, master. Back to business. You must understand why we crushed silver last year and why it was important that silver be driven back under $30. I'm all ears. Do you recall last spring when we were caught with our huge naked short position? Price was skyrocketing and the silver comex was near failure. You and I had made our emergency plans and we were ready to exit to Venezuela. How could I forget? I still dream every night about unlimited coke and chicas. Mr. Daimon was frightened too so we made a tactical decision. Rather than flee we schemed a plan that would allow us to cut silver prices nearly in half. All of the way down, we would cover short positions and effectively eliminate our exposure. In April of last year, we were short almost 40,000 contracts. Today that number is down to only 15,000 or so and still falling. That's brilliant, master. Yes and, don't tell anyone. But we've actually increased our long position too. Incredible. Yes it is amazing. Mr. Daimon is truly an evil genius. You don't become the world's most powerful and ruthless bankster by simply relying upon luck. So what happens now? What is the problem? What is the emergency? It's the actual supply of silver. I don't know if the Comex can maintain the charade much longer. I'm sorry. I'm still confused. Hungover again? I'll try to speak slowly. Have you seen that the evil Canadians are buying another $350 million worth of silver for their PSLV? Why, yes. And have you seen the latest numbers from the US Mint? Astounding. Have you seen the amount of silver that stood for delivery this month? In January? A non-delivery month. No. It was more than stood in December. Ix. And that's not all. Sure. You might be able to call up AppMex or Provident and pick up a few coins at $2 over spot. But if you want real, allocated silver, in size, you'll pay through the nose. If someone wants 5 to $10 million worth, they'll pay at least a $10 premium. Holy shit. Who in their right mind would pay that? After I'm F Global, just about anyone who wants to hold actual allocated silver in their own two hands, that's who. Good heavens. And now it looks like a movement may be afoot to take delivery through the COMEX again. Just like last April, I fear that we are again being backed into a corner. This time though, our options are limited. If we try to smash price again, physical will only decouple further from paper and our problems will intensify. How so? The wider the spread gets between paper and physical price, the more demand there will be for actual, allocated physical metal. The divergence between the two prices only serves to create more demand, not less. In short, we're fucked. I think I understand. Let me try to sum up. Lay it on me, Ruprecht. Last year, instead of fleeing to the land of unlimited chicas and coke, Mr. Diamond ordered us instead to stand and fight. Yes. So, 
With the help of the criminals at the CME, we raided Silver not once but three times. Yes. All the way down, we were covering our massive short position so as to limit our downside should the COMEX ever fail. Yes. But we couldn't get silver much below $30 because, as the price fell, demand for physical metal only increased instead of falling. Yes. So now, since we've covered well over half of our shorts, the paper price is recovering and physical demand is stronger than ever. Exactly. And with Sprout in the market again and QE3 on the way, we're headed right back to where we were last spring. You got it, monkey boy. Shit. Yep. So what are you going to do? You are the wicked witch. You've controlled the silver market for years. You always have a plan. Seriously? I don't know. We have two options and they're both bad. Please explain. Well, we could attempt to hold silver down by rebuilding our short position. I like that. The monkeys and I love skinning the sheep for every penny. But the problem is, we'll simply end up right back where we were last April. We loan a huge short position while facing a runaway train of higher prices and exploding demand. Mr. Daimon will have us both strung up by our asses. Forget that. I don't like that option anymore. Can't we just continue to naked short the SLV? No. We are already short 25 million shares and that worthless piece of crap is totally devoid of silver anyway. We need physical, and plenty of it. Perhaps Mr. Dime Monday can raid and destroy another commodity broker like MF Global. Certainly there are other firms where we can steal the sheeple's metal. Yes. There are plenty. But if we try that trick again, all confidence will be lost in the paper charade and we will only exacerbate the rush to allocated physical. No, another MF Global is off the table. I see your point. Well, then, what shall we do? I'm afraid our only choice is to manage the ascent of the paper price. We must help the COMEX maintain relevance. If physical price and demand gets too far ahead of paper, the entire scheme will come crashing down. Okay. Let's try to let silver rise in stages. We'll cause it to pause at each important technical breakpoint. We'll use the selling there to cover more and more of our short position. We must get it our position as close to neutral as possible. What shall I tell the monkeys? Allow silver to rise. Look at the charts. We will slow silver as it approaches 33. We will slow it again at 35.50 and again at 37. After that, we will try to contain it below 44 but it will most likely be headed back to 50. By the time it gets there, it will be critical that we are net neutral, maybe even net long in our overall position. Because once silver breaks through 50 American dollars, it's all over. Okay boss. I'm on it. Tonight, the monkeys and I hold our weekly meeting in the champagne room with cheaters. I'll inform them of the plan and we'll get started. Thank you, Ruprecht. You've always been a good and faithful little monkey. Now, go get me my Tagamut and my Marlboros. We've got a lot of work to do.